How you doing? My name is John Sikoris, and this is Sharice Sikoris, and we're the owners of Titan Medical Center. Welcome to Talking Shit. Here we go. First off, uh, I'd like to talk this week a little bit about what we talked about on Generation Iron. Just, uh, excuse me, on Dave Palumbo's RX Muscle um, with the Paul DeMail thing. I just wanted to explain something to you guys, okay? First of all, when the guy Jim came on, I knew he was coming on. We all knew he was coming on. It's not a live show that our people listening to live where a guy says, you know what, let me call in. Okay, we all may be, oh! A phone call. Whoa. So we knew he was coming. And Jim's a good guy, okay? And Jim is friends with Paul. He was a different kind of friend of Paul than I was. He grew up with Paul in, in that neighborhood, okay? I did not grow up with Paul. I know Paul in a different way. But I got to tell you something. You know, I just wanted to explain the reason why I started all that and, you know, was saying I was never challenged with Jim. I don't know whether, you know, and Jim and I are friends, so it's it's all good, okay? But I don't want people to remember Paul DeMeo as this, like, freak, drug addict, like, fucking, you know, maniac. And that's why I came on there originally and was trying to tell people, no, that uh, Paul DeMeo, there's a lot more to Paul. And even Jim agreed, if he probably stayed with that girl, Jill, he was with, from, that he met in middle school, he might his fate might be totally different. Okay? So, I want people to remember my friend Paul DeMeo, the one that I knew, the good guy. I knew he was a drug addict, okay? I did. But, he... That was a monkey on his back that was there for a while, and maybe he did some crazy things. But he was a good guy, and he was a good man. And you never hear fuck you, Paul DeMail stories by anybody. And the whole thing, which I clarified about Jim, uh, with, excuse me, with Jim, about him, um, you know, him, uh, him seeing Matarazzo cutting his lawn. He had told me about that with Matarazzo. He was young. He was from another neighborhood, and everybody used to talk about this kid, Mike Matarazzo, who was also really built and was a boxer and all this stuff. And he said he drove around, but he was not, a, it wasn't when he was like 19 years old, already in bodybuilding, and they already knew each other. It's before he knew Matarazzo, okay? He told me he was young, you know? He might have been like 16 years old when it happened. So, that's regardless, okay? But I know what happened, because he told me. And Jim even said, oh, you know, when, once he heard that, he, he, he was like, oh, okay, I thought you meant like when he was like 19 or later. So, what I'm trying to say is, I just want you guys to remember my friend Paul, the good guy, okay? The great bodybuilder, the guy who really, when he was in the gym, he fucking went crazy, okay? He kicked ass in the gym, okay? That's the Paul I want you to remember. So, okay, with that aside, um... Another thing, let me just clarify too. Another thing on the on the DRX muscle thing. There are a few people who got a little bit in an uproar about the Janae Crook Matt Crook thing. I don't care. You also, I also did the Generation Iron, which some of you people probably saw. I don't care what anybody does. I don't care if you want to be transgender or not. I'm just making my statement here. Okay, I don't care. If that's your thing, then that's your thing, okay? I don't see why they need to scream it out to the world. I never understood why gay people said, I need to come out. Okay, I understand if you want to let your family know, but I don't, I don't know why you have to shout it on the mountain. Who cares? I don't care, you know? You ever, you remember the, the song where, uh, 
uh, what's his name? Snoop Dogg says he's gay. He's gay. Well, okay. We want me to do about that, you know. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, it, it just when you have a family and you've had kids and your kids are even grown up now and you're fucking 40, 50, 60 years old and all of a sudden you decide, you know, I think I'm a woman and then you start that, it's always been there and shit. I find that a little hard to believe because I've been around transgenders, okay, real transgenders. This is the difference, okay? And I was making it, for instance, on the Generation I thing about bodybuilders. It's just like when people see those guys in Brazil, that'll have all the synthol in their body. Those that's body modification. It's not bodybuilding. Okay. And if that's what they want to do, even though you may think it looks ridiculous and I may think it looks ridiculous, it's okay. That's what they want to do as long as they're happy. If 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 Bruce Jenner's happy being fucking Caitlyn Jenner, that's fine. If Matt Crock's happy being Matt Crock, that's fine. But that don't make them a woman. Just like does not, you know, those those synthol guys from Brazil, those body modification guys, that doesn't make them bodybuilders, okay? That's the correlation. Because a few of you guys, I saw in a generation comments, you're getting a girl in an uproar, and they, they're like, what? what is he saying, you know? That's what I'm saying, okay? I don't get what anybody does. I don't. If anybody can, listen, back again to the Paul DeMail thing. If anybody can learn from this, all right, and learn a lesson, maybe you're out there, Maybe you're doing a lot of Oxycontins. Maybe you've got an opiate addiction yourself. Go get help. If you're doing heroin, go get help. There's no questions about it. Go get help. Okay? Because you're going to want up killing yourself. And you'll be gone. But the devastation that you're going to leave. A family is going to be hurt. Even if your family threw you out of the house. Okay, your family's going to be hurt. Paul's family is very hurt of losing Paul. But at the same time, then sometimes they wonder, maybe we shouldn't, you know. You know, because then fucking people start robbing your own family, taking shit that's your father's, your mother's, selling it so you can get fucking money. And, and, you know, you become a nemesis to them. Get help. You know you have a problem. Get help. If you can learn anything from Paul, please get help. Okay? Kabish. That's all, that, that was my point. That was what I was trying to get at. And I don't want people to remember Paul that way. And if Janae, Janelle, whatever the fuck his name is, but Matt Crook wants to be a, a woman, that's fine, okay? You're not a real woman. You're, you know, uh, you know, whatever you want to call it, a transgender, whatever. But I'm just saying, and, and you know, that whole gender fluid issue. I want to get into that. Just some of you were getting a little stewed. Just don't get stewed, please. There's too much other shit in this world that we got to worry about, okay? And on this channel, I just try to make everybody, you know, I just try to give a little something to help people and for us to, talking points here, for us to talk about stuff that isn't always just bodybuilding, okay? Because you're, in the end of the day, you're a human being first. Which gets me to my next point. You know, Flex Wheeler... We all, by now, by the time you read this, everybody knows about his leg getting cut off and, and, and all that. And all I see is videos. He's a legend. Oh, my God. It's devastating. He's a legend. Fuck, he's a legend. Fuck that. Fuck that. He's a father. He's a human being. He's somebody's son. It doesn't matter whether he's a fucking legend. I'm sorry if I'm spitting. I was just eating. Okay. I'm sorry if he's a legend or not. It doesn't mean shit to me. It means he's a human being. It doesn't matter. If your uncle, who has nothing to do, or your brother, or your sister, or somebody in your family, who is not a legend, who has nothing to do with bodybuilding, has to get their fucking leg cut off. That's, that's, it's not good, okay? And it, it affects a whole family. Forget about him being a legend of bodybuilding. They, you, because, see, that's not going to change. The fact that he's a legend, that's not going to change. He's always going to be a legend. Always. That Cutting that leg off does not take his status as a bodybuilding legend, as one of the greatest bodybuilders of all time, and up there with the greatest genetics of all time. Excuse me. <clears throat> that doesn't change. Just because he lost his leg, that doesn't change. But he's a human being. The other thing I don't like, and this 
stews my fucking ass, big time, okay? He says, a few of you fuckos who not only savor in his misery and what happened to him, but you're starting rumors. You're starting rumors. There's guys over there saying, well, he got gangrene from shooting Sintor. And that's what it was, because they were saying how he supposedly talked to Kevin LeVron or something. Said I, you know, I, I put some, you know, I shot my calves to try to help them get. I don't. I first of all, I know nothing about that. I never heard that. But even if that's true, I don't care if he dumped a bottle of synthol in his fucking legs. Okay. That was over two and a half fucking years ago, supposedly. That you fucking idiots are talking about that. That has nothing to do with why he got his fucking... And I don't believe he did that anyway. That's whatever. And whatever. Okay? He, 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 had a va he has a vascular disease. Okay? There's plenty of guys who shoot their calves and everything else with synthol, and they're not getting their legs cut off. He has a vascular disease that was causing severe... Uh, a pain, f fibromyalgia, or so whatever you call that shit, and it's fucking killing him, okay? And the pain was so severe that he could have lived with it, which means there was no gangrene there, you fucking idiots, okay? Or he could have fucking, because you can't live with gangrene, or he could have fucking have it amputated, and he chose to get rid of it because it was so fucking bad. Now, to start rumors like that, oh, it was because he shot his calves with synthol. It has to do with when he tried to make that comeback. Where the fuck do you get your goddamn medical degree? How do you fucking know that? You, you, you some of you fucking people. I gotta be on. I gotta be honest with you. There's some evil fucking people out there. Some of you guys are, are just not good, man. You just don't have a good heart, you know. And if the, if you're one of those guys, do me a favor. Stop watching my fucking videos. Get the fuck out of here, because I don't like that shit. I don't need the fucking hits, bro. I don't need it. I don't get paid. If I get a million views on this video, I don't get one dime for that. Not one fucking dime. Okay? It's not my channel. This is not my channel. I have my own channel. It's the channel I comment from. So I'm not saying any of this shit. I don't need to make videos about, you know, Flex Wheeler, breaking news. Flex Wheeler gets... No, 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 no. I'm talking about the guys who are talking shit about this poor guy getting his calf cut off because he, you know, that's from when he tried to make that comeback, he was shooting synthol, and I think he maybe hit a nerve there or did it. Bullshit. Bullshit. The man has a vascular fucking disease, okay? He has a vascular disease. Leave him alone. Wish him well. I don't care. He's not a bad guy. Was he cocky in his day? Yeah, he was cocky. He knows. Him and I have had that, you know, with each other. But we're friends. We, you know, we, we, you know, long, we've been friends a long time, man. I worked with him for years, years. Okay, him and Sean Ray, we all did the radio show together, everything, okay? I worked with him for a long time. He's not a bad guy. You got to get to know him. He's a good guy, okay? And he's very smart. He's very sharp. And he doesn't deserve what some of you fucking guys are spewing out there. It's not fair. These rumors are very hurtful. And that's how shit starts in this fucking, in this industry. It's just like when Rich Piana died. You hear all kinds of fucking rumors and shit. You know what I mean? You know, even Dave and I had an argument, okay, about that. You know, about him being murdered and all kinds of, listen to me. Shit happens, but you can't believe everything you read or hear or see on the internet, okay? It, things are, you know, you know, you watch these YouTubers and you watch these people, you listen to some of the shit that these people say and it's, it's outrageous to me. It's outrageous. It's absolutely fucking crazy, okay? It's fucking crazy. And, it's, it's, and, and a lot of it's misinformation. You know, enough of you people start saying that shit about him. If there's enough guys fucking saying that shit about him. Oh, yeah, it's Sintol, Sintol. It, it, some idiot's going to make a video saying it was Sintol. And other people are going to believe that. They're going to believe it. Okay? That's what happens. A lie gets fucking... 
it's thrown around enough about that, you know, and they're going to believe it, you know. So, you know, just like all the shit with Larry Wheels and this one and that one, then you find out the real story about some of these guys. And you see, it's a, you son of a bitch. I actually fucking believe that shit. You fuck, you know, I believe I watched a few videos and you're saying this guy did this and I get it, then you find out it's not fucking true. Some girl with a fucking chip on her shoulder maybe made it up. So, let's be a little bit careful about what we know and what we don't know. And when somebody like Sean Ray, who I know a lot of you do not like him, I fucking love Sean. He happens to be one of my best friends in the industry of bodybuilding. One of, he's one of my best friends. Ironically, so is Lee Priest. And those two really don't like each other, trust me. Okay? But even Flex and Sean, when I worked with them, I've seen them to fucking argue like this. I've seen it. I've been there. You know, we did the radio show together for, for Steve Blackman. And, we, you know, they, those two would argue and a fight over who's like, to, you know, over shit. Just so, but when Sean Ray comes out and says to you, listen, I sat with Flex and I talked with him, you know, and this is, this is what happened. You can engrave that shit in stone. I'm telling you that I believe his report on Flex and I believe when he says what happened, that's what happened. Okay? The beach. I know, because I know Sean different than you guys know Sean. I know Flex Wheeler different than you guys know Flex Wheeler. And I knew Paul the male different than you guys, okay? I, there's enough bad press on some of these people. We don't need to give more. All right? I, look, guys. Again, you know, it, it, the source matters where you're getting this stuff from. The source matters. And in this case... I believe everything, and I want to wish Flex Wheeler, you know, I believe everything that Sean Ray says, and I want to wish Flex Wheeler a really speedy recovery, because I know Flex, I know him very well, and I can tell you this, even no fucking leg, getting cut, getting that one leg cut off from the knee down, is not going to stop that guy, he'll be back, I don't mean bodybuilding, but he'll be back doing something big, that's the way Flex Wheeler is, okay, he's smart, I want to wish him the best. Let's all just not fucking chastise him. I don't give a shit what he, you think he did for his last show. Or whatever he did. Let's all wish him well. Because forget about the legend that's always going to be there. He's always going to be a legend. You can't take what he's accomplished away from him. You can't take that away. But he's a human being first. He's a man. Okay? Just like each one of you guys. And it matters whether it's him or whether it's one of you. To me, it matters. And I hope none of you ever have to go through that. Alright? Gabish! Alright. Let's talk about something else. Alright. Hey, another thing. I get asked. I didn't write it down, but... Who it was? I don't know if it was Lord Sith. Seth? Uh, someone asked me how prevalent... Are party drugs in bodybuilding? I get. I think I talked about this with Dave on um, RX Muscle. Bodybuilders are guys of excess, all right. And uh, you know when they talked about with Paul DeMeo when we were on there, you know, with with his friend Jimmy, we talked about that. A lot of guys, you'd be shocked about how many big time pro bodybuilders are on recreational drugs as well. There's something about bodybuilders that we do everything in excess, whether it's eating, training, you know. The normal person doesn't care, doesn't want to look like a big Rammy. The normal person doesn't want to spend all day in a gym or fucking, you know, want to make this a living out of this shit. The normal person, whenever they do something, you know, you know like, uh, it, it, you know, it doesn't like, uh, give me four Tylenols instead of two. The pain is really here. You know, the normal person doesn't have that in them, Okay. It, you know, uh, compulsive, obsessive, whatever you want to say. But bodybuilders are very, 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 you know, a lot of bodybuilders do party. It's, a, it's, you know, they like drugs for every fucking, that's what happens. 
I think as a young bodybuilder to start taking drugs and shit, you start taking steroids, and you start thinking, I'm going to take steroids, and I'm going to take, you know, now today I'm talking about, you know, I could take peptides, you know, for this, and I'm going to take, so steroids for this, peptides for that, you know, then I'm going to take the cutting agents, you know, whether it's Combutol, you know, Cytomil, uh, Cytodrin to help fucking stop the fucking, uh, uh, you know, your cortisol levels, you know, the growth hormone, the IGF, you know, by the time you're done doing all that shit, you've learned. You've mentally learned to take a to take a chemical for every process in the body. Okay? Helios. However you say heliax, helios, I don't know how you say it. But it's a, it's that injection that guys shoot right into their body fat, okay? Which is a combination of injectable himbine and and uh, or yohimbe, whatever, and um and clombutyl, injectable clombutyl, supposedly it goes right into the fat. I you know, I've never done shit like that, but I've seen guys do it, but it's fucking insane to me. Okay, so you got all these fucking drugs. So you mentally, in your brain, you fu you figure out there's a drug for every process f in the body, especially to get cut, to get bigger, to fucking lean out, to get rid of water, to get that dry, hard look, to fill the muscles up, to deplete the muscles, to keep your sodium up, to keep your sodium down, to keep your potassium up, to get rid of stop quarters. This is a fucking process. This is a drug for every one of those things. So I think that that opens up Pandora's box too. What a lot of these guys, you know, and they start using the new bane and 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 all, and they start using all these other things to stop with the fucking pain, you know, from all the shit that they're taking. And, you know, and you know, even a even a even to, there's so many th things out there that you could take, even stuff to clear out your liver and your kidneys. A lot of times, some of those same things will put stress on your liver and kidneys. Didn't you ever notice? That when you take a drug, like for instance, like an antidepressant, one of the side effects for antidepression is depression. And you say, wait a minute, if I'm taking this to stop depression, then what, how is it going to bring me depression? I haven't figured that out either, so I you know, talk to the drug companies about that. But what I'm trying to say is that as bodybuilders start getting to certain levels, they become more open to drug use of any kind because that's what they, you know, that's what happens, okay? Um, you, know, you know, a lot of guys fuck around with ayahuasca, DMT, and all this shit, and they go on these trips, and you know, you know, I now I found my reality in life, and it helps you to see things more clearly. That's you, bro. If that's what you feel, and I know there's a few guys who have actually attacked me in the comments for that, Okay. About like you know what like what Joe Rogan talks about the DMT and all that you know the that's hallucinogenics. The word hallucinogen means you're hallucinating. You're not fucking talking to God. You're not talking to some fucking people from the other side. You're not talking to aliens. You haven't discovered the true meaning of life. If you need that, if you need a drug to help you discover the true meaning of life, like DMT and all that shit, then God bless you. I don't need that drug. Okay, I got the true meaning of life. It's all in the next rooms. It's my family, okay? It's the people I love, and it's my inner fucking strength. Because I, I love life, okay? And I, I'm happy to be alive every fucking day. Go sit in a jail cell, isolated, by yourself. You'll learn, okay? You'll learn right there. So, what I'm telling you, you'll learn what's important is what I'm trying to tell you. You know, I don't need no fucking DMT or ayahuasca or any of that shit to go fucking make my brain chagad, you know, hallucinate. I don't. I never understood that, but it just seems like today those are the drugs that people are fucking with. You know, even the heroin, you know, the marijuana. Yeah, no, marijuana's got all these properties. Oh, it could cure cancer. Well, it didn't help Bob Marley, who died of cancer. Okay, he died. He got cancer first on his toe. It, Google it. Okay, and he died of cancer. It spread to his body. So all the it's just like, listen, I, I got to tell you something about the cancer, too, all right? It's just like I, I see like people like Thomas DeLauer and, 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 uh, and what's his name? Uh, Dr. Berg, Eric Berg, and those kind of guys talking about that shit. And, you know, uh, cancer needs sugar to fucking, you know. Let me tell you something. You could fucking, you could, you could eat no sugar at all. You could just eat red meat and oil. Uh, or just drink red meat and water, okay? You know, I meant was gonna make coconut oil, or whatever. Your body's gonna manufacture sugar. That tumor's gonna find sugar. It's gonna find it because your liver's gonna make it through gluconeogenesis. So you could have no sugar at all, and your body's still gonna find sugar. Kabish. So what I'm trying to tell you is, 
all these needs for drugs and all this shit that you think that you're taking to help prevent something or whatever or enhance something. I'm sorry, but I think that bodybuilding makes you more uh, susceptible to do that. Because I know when I was a natural, I used to, I never even took fucking Tylenols or, or anything. And then after I started taking drugs, I'd be popping the Tylenols, I'd be popping fucking, you know, because you're pinning the shit out of yourself. And and you become fucking sore and, you know, all this other shit. And I, I would have took, you know, I didn't take any party drugs, thank God. Okay, because I didn't, I like to con be in control. I don't like anything all to the mind. But, you know, hey, listen, I took a lot of ephedrine. I take a lot of fucking caffeine even now sometimes. I cut it down. But, you know, I wouldn't have taken that before. When I was natural, I never took caffeine. I never drank coffee. I, either, I you know, I took a, every once in a while, I would take a multivitamins because I thought the B12 would make me, give me energy. But the, my mind being open to taking so many different drugs made me more susceptible to saying, you know what? Let me start taking, you know, let's see, I got a lot of pain here. So instead of fucking taking two Tylenol, let me take four, you know, it's, you know, shit like that. It definitely opens up your mind to doing bigger things. So that's all I'm trying to say. I'm just, I'm not trying to go into a huge spin, but yes, I think bodybuilder, you know, I think that drug use is prevalent between, uh, in, amongst bodybuilders a lot so because, I think it doesn't start out that way. I think that once we start taking a drug for every process and to enhance every process in the muscle making, getting cut, losing weight, losing water and all everything, stopping cortisone and all that shit that goes with that, I think it opens up the door to the possibility of doing other drugs for other things. You know, if you want to gain greater awareness... Use DMT, sure, well, you know, I never would have thought about that before, but now you say, well, maybe try it, you know, well, why not, you know, I take a I take a drug for everything else, maybe that'll make me more, maybe it'll give me more of the eye of the tiger, maybe I'll be even more hungry to win the Olympia or something like that, so it does, I, it does, I've seen it, I've, I've experienced it myself, okay, I've never taken party drugs per se, never, okay, but... I, I never would have done ephedrine, I never even done, would have done caffeine, and I did, and I never would have took, I used to fucking pop those fucking, I used to pop ibuprofen or whatever, and I never took the normal dose, I was a normal body, like an handlers, you know, to, you know, and so I took more, I would have always took, which I never, I used to brag, but I never took a fucking aspirin, you know what I mean, so, there you go, that's the answer to that question. Are bodybuilders more prone? Are they, you know, are, do they, are they big on party drugs? Hell yeah. I'm around these guys all the time. They like to party too. Don't kid yourself. And that's not nothing new. It was even in Arnold's Day. A lot of those guys like to party. Not like today though. Not like today. Today, they fucking party. Alright. So that's it for this week, guys. Um... I just wanted to clarify a lot of things. I want you guys to know, you know, you know, when I, you know, just recovering everything I talked about. You know, I just wanted you guys to know about the Paul DeMeo thing and how he was a good guy. And let's give, let's give, uh, and it wasn't just some fucking freaky drug addict, you know what I mean? He was, you know, some fucking, you know, just muscle head that just, it was, you know, on fucking constant fucking heroin. He, he had, there was a different side to him too, okay? And, he got lost when he was like that. That's eventually what killed him and cost him his career. All right? And if if if, if, uh, if he would have stayed with that girl, Jill, forget about it. But also, we talked about Flex Wheeler. We want to wish him the best. He didn't fuck. It wasn't from Synthol. Get that shit out of your heads. Don't listen to anybody that's saying that on the internet. Don't say, oh, his comeback caused this. It's not true. He had fuck. He has a vascular disease. Okay? Sean Ray talked to him, and I know that when Sean Ray says that, believe me, Sean Ray's legit. So let's just let's just stop the bullshit. Forget about that he's a legend, and let's remember he's a human being first. So let's just root for him as a human being. He's always going to be a legend. That's, you can't take that away. He can cut off whatever he has. He's still a legend. That, you can't take away what he's accomplished. So listen, you guys. What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do with a lot of you guys, huh? I get messages from some of you. I notice some of you guys have emailed me or whatever. My girlfriend gets the emails first, and she gets them to me when you have a chance. I haven't gotten a chance to look at some of the emails, and so if you have emailed me, 
and I haven't emailed you back. Try, try to give me a little more time. I'm sorry. It's just that uh, you have to understand. I get emails every fucking day. I'm doing this shit with Generation Iron. I just did Generation Iron 4. Okay. The movie. Generation Iron 4. As well as you, the videos you guys have already probably seen me on Generation Iron. On the network there. On the YouTube channel and all that shit. So you see that. I've, I've been doing a lot of shit. I got a ton of fucking bullshit going on over this way. You know. Um, now I get, to, I have some family shit that I'm taking care of too that I have to take care of, you know. So that's what I'm telling you. All right. As a matter of fact, uh, I touched on something there, you know, uh, about the cancer thing. So somebody in my family has cancer. Uh, I just want to say, when you watch these guys, this is just how fucked up the internet is. They can make you really believe. Oh, take extra vitamin C, and it's been shown to prove. Or you know, vitamin B12 is you know, vitamin B complex. Drink apple cider vinegar; just it will kill cancer. It's all bullshit. None of it's true. If that was the case, then people wouldn't be doing chemotherapy. People wouldn't. And and just like oh, you know, sugar eats sugar, uh, cancer eats sugar. So stay away from sugar. If you if you keto it, you won't get cancer. It's all bullshit. Okay. Just like with the Bob Marley thing, like I just said, guy smoking pot kills, you know, cancer cells or helps you. No, no, it doesn't. He died of cancer. Okay, your body's gonna find the sugar. It's gonna find. It's gonna manufacture it because your, your body's always making sugar. Sorry, your liver, gluconeogenesis. You could drink cooking oil, <laughs> and it will get, you will make it into sugar. Your liver will, if you have no sugar, if you don't ingest sugar. So. I'm just telling you, all right? Listen, guys, I love you guys. You know, we, again, life is hills and valleys. We all go through bullshit, all right? We can't, uh, you know, we, we, nobody lives a perfect life, especially bodybuilders. You, you, you put all these chemicals inside you, you're asking for trouble. It, Dave Plumbolte, he's got little things with him. You know, I have little things. Everybody has little things. You put all these chemicals inside you and eat like a fucking, you know, like a Roman gladiator, you're going to get fucking problems, you know. So let's try to just deal with life, okay? Be glad that you're here and don't st always fucking stress little bullshit and beat your head all against the wall over things that cannot be changed that way. He's going to get a sore head, okay? That's all that's going to happen. You can stand here and crack yourself in the head like this constantly. And what would you do? He made a fool of yourself. He, he, he hit yourself on the head so many times you hurt your head. And the situation is the same. Get up. Go forward. And just keep fucking plugging along. You're here. You, you, you're not. There's no expiration date on, on a tag on the bottom of your foot. Live. Okay, stop stressing shit. If you got anxiety, try to control it. Breathe. Try to deal with your anxiety. Don't let it rule you. Okay, I know it's easier said than done. Okay, but you don't need a pill that's going to make it your God. Like this. And to take away the pain of anxiety. Alright? It's not going to do it. Because then you become hooked on that pill. I have a friend that's hooked on a pill. And he tried to cut his medication down. And he he went to such a fear mode. That he had to fucking immediately. It took him two, three days to get back out. You know, normal. Of, you know, because he, he was on Lexapro. So what I'm trying to tell you is. You don't need that shit. And if you're on it, you know. You can't just stop or you're going to be fucked. You're going to have to like wean yourself slowly off of it. But, you know. You have to try to mentally mentally get yourself where you need to be and stop stressing shit that's out of your control. You're not the only person that has drama in his life. Trust me. You're not the only movie stars. Billionaires have drama in their life. You're not the only one. So stop beating yourself up. You're not alone. I'm here. I care. So, knowing that, let's be good to ourselves. Don't talk shit about yourself like I always say. Don't sit and think of yourself as a loser. No girl's ever going to like me because right there you're doomed. Okay? 
I have a friend who's fucking, I've told you this before, 500 pounds. And he gets more ass than a fucking toilet seat in Grand Central Station. Alright? He gets hot girls. You know why? Because his fucking attitude, the way he thinks, the way he carries himself. I have another friend who's 480 pounds. And he can't get a girl to save his life. And he blames his fat for it. Oh, I'm fat bastard, that's why. Well, how come Chris, who's bigger than you, gets all the girls in the world? And you can't. It's because the way you carry yourself. You come here with a fucking pork chop. You wear the same old raggedy clothes and it's, you, you exhume. You tell everybody your problems. You know what I mean? And nobody wants to hear that shit. You're a downer. If you're a downer, you meet a girl and you start telling her, Oh, I really like you. Every time I meet a girl, she's always mean. And she's never understand. the same. You girl wants to hear that. She's looking at you like fucking chump. You're a chump. You know what I mean? You don't tell a girl that shit. You don't sit here and say how many times you've been fucked over, been fucked over by a lot of girls, you gotta forgive me. Nobody wants to hear that shit. You, you know, you, you just, you might as well bend over and expose your asshole, because that's what you're doing. Okay? Stop doing that. Stop thinking you're a loser. Be good to yourself. Be excellent to yourself. And treat other people good, and all of a sudden, you're gonna notice your life gets a lot better. I care. Alright. Be good to your girls. Be good to your significant other. Whatever your spin is. Treat your kids good. Give you, you know, pay your child support. Remember what I always tell you: it doesn't matter what she does with the money. It doesn't matter. Okay, even if they talk shit about you and you, you're a piece of shit to your own kids, like I hate you. You're not my father. Okay, one day you're gonna be the hero. You'll see. Trust me, it's gonna happen. Cause she takes that money and she gives it to the new guy she's with. She says, "Here, honey, look, the asshole gave me child support this month." And you go and she spends it. One day when those kids are older, they're going to say, my father gave you child support and you spent it on that fucking asshole. That was my money. There you go. That's how shit changes. So, all right. Gabish. Hills and valleys, guys. Remember, you're not the only one. You're not the only one that's got money problems. You're not the only one that's got girlfriend problems. You're not the only one maybe going through a divorce. Or you're not the only one whose parents died or whatever the fuck. You're not the only one. Join the rest of the world. It's okay to cry. It ain't okay to quit. All right. Give yourself a break, huh? Be good to yourself. I'll see you next week. Titan Medical Center, we are here to make you feel better, look better, and perform better. We're here to get you to your optimal levels in the most natural way possible. We are a boutique style clinic without the boutique style costs. All medications are monitored and prescribed by a physician. Let us help you get the results you've been wanting. Come to Titan Medical Center for the most cutting edge therapies and the most current information on how to take the most natural approach to your health.